So I'm signed in on my browser and then also have my iPad up and running on the right hand side and I'm using QuickTime to capture this and that's because the simulator for iOS 16.4 isn't allowing the push notifications. However, you would just come into your settings in Safari and then all the way down at the bottom with the advanced tab, you can then enable a experimental feature and you will want to enable this notifications feature. And this is just for the 16.4 beta. On the final release, hopefully this setting is already enabled. However, we can come back to the application and we can hit allow notifications. We then see we get a message if we would like to send notifications and I'll hit allow. On my browser, I'll also hit allow and then we can confirm that we want to allow notifications. And then I'll come under comments, I'll create a new comment. And then when I create the comment, we'll see the notification on the right hand side. And so in this episode, we're going to look at creating the push notifications. And the nice thing about this is that we're not going to need any external service to do this. And we're also not going to need to set up anything with Apple or Google to enable the push notifications. And hopefully this will pave a way for the future with the progressive web applications on iOS devices. And the other cool thing is here I can show you that I don't have any applications open. So I'm going to leave everything turned off. I'll come in and create a new comment and then we'll still get the push notification. So this truly is the push notifications just as if you had a native application. And to start off this application, I am going to create a very basic device setup. And we're also going to be using the code from episode 212, which is the initial framework for the progressive web application. And really none of this has changed from that episode. So we'll be using this as a building block. And what I'll do is simply just copy and paste the code from this episode into a new Rails 7 application that I'll create for this template. And again, we are going to have a very basic device install. And that's simply because when we are registering a device to receive notifications, we need to store that information on our end so that we can then recall it and then push the notifications up for that particular user. And did you know that you can go to railstore.com to get your own Ruby on Rails t-shirt or your Drift and Ruby t-shirt? To watch this full episode and more videos, visit driftandruby.com and subscribe to the pro membership.